Liberians, we always say that we want to build our country, we want to develop our country. Yet we don't do the simple things that's needed to be able to do so. Let's look at agriculture, for example. Cocoa, tomatoes, onions. Things that we can easily grow in this country. Easily grow. We import from Cote d'Ivoire. Let's look at pepper. We import from Guinea and Cote d'Ivoire. Peanuts. We import from Guinea. We also go as far as Togo to import things such as potatoes. Let's even look at the staple food of rice, something that every single day Liberian men say he has to eat. We spend over $200 million every single year importing from places such as China, Indonesia, Japan, and Thailand. How are we gonna build our own country? Imagine spending $200 million not to import rice, but to build our agriculture sector, to hire farmers, to hire Liberians, to be able to cultivate our land so that we can have food security in this country. There's no reason why every school in this country shouldn't have a small farm or a small garden. There's no reason why every high school student shouldn't have the technical and vocational training to be able to cultivate their land. And there's no reason why every county in this country should not have the ability to help the food, with the food security in this country. There's no reason why we should be importing things such as pepper, fruits, rice. These are things that we have to be able to change. We have to change our mindset in how we say we want to build this country. We have the people. We have the talent. We have the land. And we have the weather. The question now is, are we going to have the mindset to do so? And we don't need government to come tell us to grow farm. We don't need government to tell schools to do so, to tell individuals to do so. We have to be able to grow what we eat. Hello, once again, it's Saturday, and this is the Gracious Hope live podcast here. And we are once again here to talk about steps for Liberia to grow. This is the part two, and that was Dr. Clarence Moniva, who is so firm on the need for all Liberians to engage in self-sufficiency. That is, we have to grow our country into a vibrant a country or homeland that will be better for ourselves and our uh, children, the next generation. And therefore, last week uh, on this program or podcast, we spoke about or we discussed uh, everything that had to do with uh, food security. How can we secure our own agricultural industry? How can we plant? Because according to him, if the government can spend uh, 200 million just to import our staple food, yeah, then there's something wrong somewhere. And uh, we got into the um, USAID report last week, as well as the World Food Program talking about food security. How best can we uh, make available things or basic life necessities to keep our country afloat? And today we'll look at entrepreneurship. I mean, what does it mean to promote an atmosphere of a business environment? And so on this podcast today, we'll be looking at uh, the many ideas that we librarians should be sharing. And there are many ideas, and these ideas are available to grow the librarian state into a vibrant society despite decades of chaotic or chaotic governance uh, over resources. Uh, it called for a better society in which a government can create the necessary conditions and atmosphere will allow innovation, creativity, and job opportunities for individual citizens and families. Now, most importantly, progress will suffice when a spiritual growth of our faith is in line with all ingredients of tangible development and the willpower to encourage Liberians to take charge of their own economy. Now, the Liberian business community needs 
the proper mindset and resources to implement ways and means to grow the Liberian economy for self sufficiency. And that is what we'll be looking at today. If you're just joining us, we'd like to say welcome to the Gracious Hope podcast. And we have special guest today, Mr. Kendrick Menti, who is a businessman. And he understands the, the business environment in the United States. He's from Massachusetts, and um, he runs his own business. And he has some ideas to share. What does it mean to be a businessman, especially if you're a Liberian? And if you're a Liberian and you are thinking about how you can want to establish your own business, whether in the United States or in your home country, um, there are ways and means in which you can prepare yourself. And he will talk about his experience and uh, what are some of the ways and means in which we all can build our country, Liberia. We come from various uh, sectors of the of the country. That is, some people come from Grand Basso County, Vojima, and other places. But again, as community in those areas become a focus for each of us, I believe that we can uh, work in unison to see how we can build from the community level to the national level. And therefore, this podcast is going to be focusing on the, po- the positive aspect of development. How can we develop our country in every way? And now some of us, we live in the diaspora that is uh, in foreign lands and we see how developed it is here. But it did not take overnight. It had to do with nationalism, patriotism, hard work, individual liberty, and individual strength. And most importantly, your faith, your spirit, and your mind, your soul in sync with God. And so that's what we'll be looking at today. But before we do so, uh, before I bring on my guests and also the co-host of this program, uh, Reverend Swat S. Dede, I want to remind you that this is all biblical. You know why? Because if you look back in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, where Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem, before he could do so, he was in exile. And he asked the king at the time, Arthur Zexis, uh, permission to go and build his city. This is this is what he said. He was very terrified and felt very sad in the sight of the king. And this is what happened. He said, then I was terrified, but I replied, that, he, that is, he replied to the king, that is uh, King Artaxerxes, long live the king. How can I be sad for the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king asked, well, how can I help you? With a prayer to God, to the God of heaven, I replied, if it please the king, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. So here, Nehemiah, who was also in exile, he uh, played with the king, and the king gave me the permission to go what? To go build his ruined city. If you look at Liberia, all that we've been through all the years, the decades of uh, chaos, uh, mismanagement over resources, for government to government, corruption, all that you've been hearing, it starts from the human heart. However, it takes the individual willpower with the help of God to help each of us to go and build our country. So it's a message here for those in the diaspora, those who are deciding to go back home, and those who are already on the ground, how can we join hands to build our country in various ways? And that's what we'll be talking about today, and I'm so glad to bring on the co-host of this program, Reverend Swat S. Dede. Reverend Dede, we are back here again to do the part two of Steps for Liberia to Grow. Certainly, certainly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it, no matter what circumstances we have faced with, because to God be the glory for great things he has done, and indeed, greater things he will certainly do, must certainly do. So I'm glad we are back today, my brother. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ellis, happy birthday, man. You want to hide this from me, but happy birthday. I cannot allow the day to pass without saying happy blessed breath thank you my brother the reverend doctor <laughs> <laughs> yes birthday 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 it's just another day yeah. but i'm so grateful to all those who are saying happy birthday and also to you reverend daddy indeed 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 but thank god for you for for all the stick to itiveness you brought to this this podcast and all the background scenes and i, I want to welcome uh 
my two friends, uh, Menti, and, and of course, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Zizi Pade. We've come a long, long way. Uh, it is a good thing when your friends can uh, have the time to join you to discuss this this very pivotal and important topic. As we know, Liberia remains a, a poor nation. Uh, if you have to rebuild, people have to be uh, able to step up to the plate when it comes to the yeah. and other things uh, in the society. But Liberia remains a poor country with a high unemployment rate of what, 4%, 4 percent, 4 percent of the wow. unemployment rate, according to or the ILO and the World Bank or, or statistics. And Liberia is among uh, 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 the five poorest country in the world with 85% mm. of the population without formal employment and 84% of the population living uh, on less than $1.25. So to rebuild, we have a lot of work to do. So I hope our guests can uh, bring some knowledge to the discussion today so that we find ways and means how we can forge ahead with the economy we have and the people we have so that together we can build our nation. So Ellis, I'm really uh, uh, looking forward to the discussion today. And welcome again, buddy. Yes, we are all looking forward to that. And if you are listening to us, uh, if you're just checking in, please share this link. Okay, share with your friends. Just click share and let it go because we want for everyone to have an opportunity uh, to listen to some of the things we'll be talking about. It's all positive discussion here. And this uh, podcast is all about contemporary issues that affect the Christian life of faith. We tend to uh, preserve and promote our Christian heritage in every way. In that way, we know that we can understand and live the principles and values that we read from the Word of God, the Bible. And so we will be right back. Don't go away. We'll be right back. All right, so we are back, and our special guests are Mr. Uh, Kendrick Menti. He's from Massachusetts, and he runs a business, and uh, he will be sharing his insight here with us. We also have Reverend Dr. Zese Pade, and uh, he pastors the Seneca United Methodist uh, Church in the city of Seneca, Pennsylvania. He's from Fuentimal Lofa County. And uh, he received his PhD, his THD, that is his doctoral degree in um, theological studies at the uh, United Methodist uh, University. And so he will be joining us as well. So without much ado, let us bring on our guests here, uh, Reverend Dr. Pade and uh, 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 Mr. Kendrick Menti. Mr. Kendrick Menti is on the right. I think you see his name. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Zese Pane is on the left. Welcome to the Gracious Hope podcast uh, this afternoon. Thank you, Alex, and uh, thank you, Brother Sua. It's a pleasure to join you guys this evening or this afternoon, I think this evening on the East Coast here. Welcome. Yeah, cool. yeah. Hey, Brother Red, uh, Dr. Red, first of all, let me say happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to follow from my senior brother, Dr. Swa, who sits uh, uh, also with us today. Uh, we want to wish you well and that uh, hope and pray that uh, God will continue to uh, strengthen you. Uh, like I indicated uh, just briefly on that note that was sent out on the AJA page, Liberia it's uh in a very challenging time and uh the joshua generation eventually uh will bring about uh, the news that is necessary so it's good to be here uh it's a lovely day here from western pennsylvania and uh, what a way to be able to come together to join brothers uh in the law brothers uh, who are genuinely committed to uh, the message of the gospel I watch often from time to time, and uh, I just want to appreciate you both uh, for continuing this uh, important program. Um, it's good to be here, and it's good that uh, we can join you to, to be a part of this conversation. We need it. Uh, as you readily stated, um, 
being the change uh, we want to be, or if I may quote it right, be the change you wish to see in the world. Uh, if I'm uh, going back to uh, Mohammed uh, Gandhi, mm -hmm. uh, who played a very tremendous role in India uh, when it was uh, the time for the struggle and the liberation of his people uh, from British occupation. Uh, I'm glad to be here and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Yes, and uh, so the first question that will put out here for us to discuss, and for you, Mr. Menti, uh, from Liberia, coming to the United States, both of, both all of us <laughs> from Liberia to the United States, and your experience noticing the environment and community that you live in, um, and having the drive to get into uh, fending for yourself or self-sufficiency is what you thought about and starting a business. Why can you tell Liberians who are also thinking that way in developing, not just themselves, in getting into business in order to cater to other Liberians, uh, but also Liberians who look at a country now and see a lot of things that are wrong, seeing the economy is totally determined by non-Liberians. Uh, what is your take so far uh, from your own perspective, knowing what you went through experience in order to be where you are today? Uh, Alex, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so much excited to appear on the podcast. Like you and I have been discussing only um, the time we met, I think a couple of months ago, we've been discussing issues behind the scene regarding what Liberian can do to to move the country forward. So I excited because my coming on this show with all of you coming from the uh, religious background and what motivates me each and every day is my Tremedia fit in our creator. I wouldn't have been to where I'm at now if I all I never, never surrender everything that I do on a day-to-day -day basis to Jesus Christ. That's how I live my life. You won't believe it, right in my office, uh, in Randall, Massachusetts, I have a Jesus Christ portrait on my wall. And you know, we live in a society that is, you know, kind of, you know, complex. People come and say, Kendrick, in spite of your faith, you will have, you know, people that interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. They might not take this, you know, it might be an inherent violation of HR code. I said, well, I'm a, I'm a business owner. If folks come here and they say, because I've you know, posted Jesus' portrait on my wall, so that, bis that piece of business should not be for me. Because the truth of it, all that I've been in life and what I want to do in life will not be achieved without my faith in God. So to come to the point of entrepreneurship and what impact we can have on the country Liberia, I'm more than happy to discuss my insight. I started from a humble beginning, you know. I started from Liberia before I came to the States. I used to have a you know, computer training school. Yeah, I have four computers, you know, on Banting Street, opposite the old defense ministry, the late uh, uh, Senator uh, Dagose. He used to be my, you know, professor at Zion, you know, university at that time. He was teaching me financial management. And we connected truly. So he offered me an office space, Alex, and that there where I started my entrepreneur journey. And when I came to America, we all I came here with a visiting visa in the first place. And I, I benefited from the TPA for some time. After the, you know, so that's a good story. My legal starter, you know, <laughs> you know, after my legal starter went through, we all started working, you know. You know, nine to five or overnight, this, that. But it reached a point, I decided to, you know, just leave that and go by the school. So I enrolled to a graduate program at a college, college in Massachusetts, in Milton, Massachusetts. When I graduated, I was really desperate. Having here, most of my friends are working in the corporate environment, this one always making six figure. I wanted to give it a shot. I applied everywhere. I went. <laughs> You know, you as a man of God, you know that, you know, God closed that door to open another door. I think that what happened to me. Mm -hmm. So for 
I took a, a, a professional training with MetLife Insurance Company for six months. They offered me, you know, a job that time, you know, it was an entry position at that time, you know, um, 2011. They offered me a seventy-five thousand dollar, with you know, as a starting, you know, a, 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 a salary. A week for me to start in that position, they told me flat, oh, you don't have a good credit because in the industry you have to get a credit. So hmm. I left it. I applied to another financial institution for security, you know, uh, a security officer, investment security officer, because that's what I did. So. I went through the process again, the job was offer. They came down to me and said, we ran your credit, your credit is not good. So what did I do? Like we all know from the scripture, I said to myself in 2011, I said, I would, from here, I would never apply for any more job. I would write a paycheck. I said it by faith. That time I had no clue, I had no money. My home was going through modification. I was at the point of bankruptcy. But as an entrepreneur, what is very important to us is what? We take risks. So the conversation will continue. But the foundation of anybody to succeed in entrepreneurial life, you have to have that inherent faith and look at the big picture. And what are they? To fast forward today, like you saw from my profile, maybe on LinkedIn or from my website, I'm an employer here in Massachusetts. You know, we have at least, we, we still try to have a 45 to 50 people on our payroll on a bi weekly basis. So all came because of faith. I never had a dime in the bank to say I wanted to do this. So, mm -hmm. but what make me to go to this level is what the enabling environment is here in America. We have security. We have government that's you know we got a legal system that protects you, that also protect your worker. So if Liberia entrepreneurship should try and look at all the legendary or big picture you know go to transform that country, like the entry you have from the on Dr. Uh, Moniba, you know, it's, it's very insightful. However, we need the environment to be created in Liberia. So we'll go through this and uh, I'll become on with more insight into this. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Very great. Very great. If, if, before, before I go to uh, Dr. Pari, I just want to follow up on a very important point you made. The enabling environment, even though you say we'll come back to it, but it's important that we continue in that track. So how can we create that enabling environment in Liberia for our business entrepreneurs to succeed as you have succeeded in America? That is what it's simple. We all are looking at what? Data. There are legendary, you know, court cases in Liberia that have on a you know, multi-million dollar investment. Like I saw one last night, and I read it before. If you look at what the issue of what corruption 101, it was a what? Um, <clears throat> a multi million dollar investment through a Canadian firm. Mm. They went to Liberia, in some, I think around 2004 or five. And these people spent a whole lot of money through licensing process. That venture, if they had been allowed to take over, it would have what tremendous economic impact on Liberia, ordinary Liberia. But if people were, were brought there, they were robbed out of their investment, the case went to the Supreme Court, the legal system is a fraud at the moment. There was a decision rendered to us in favor of that company, according to other things that we can't you know, say here on, on, our, you know, on their podcast, at the highest level of the Supreme Court of Liberia, and at the highest level of the presidency, they went together and what? They just decided that this case should just be, you know, a play politics. After the you know, a decision had been rendered by the lower court, affirming the legitimacy of these people, you know, investment, the chief justice said, oh, the case should go back to trial. So when I say enabling environment, 
you have to get an independent judiciary. You will have to get what? A security, you know, uh, people must have confidence in the security sector. That what we're saying on a day-to-day -day basis, there are unexplained death occurring. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I went to Liberia after 18 years in um, 2018. It was a scary night for me when I arrived in Monrovia. I, my, I was watching an RLJ hotel. And it was a hotel that, that, that um, Harry Grease, or uh, Mr. Harry Grease were taking, and up to today's day, we don't know what happened to him. So I had a phobia to sleep in that hotel that night. Hmm. So when you look at environment where you know people have mysteriously been killed, no explanation, and the judiciary, you know, lawyers that don't even exercise true uh, integrity, they don't look at ethics, they say they got a law degree, but they are all convoluted and tainted. Justices have been bribed. There was a, a thing, it used to be on uh, Costa's show about one other, you know, um, case that a judge put an injunction on a bank account and later went in cahoots with another party and disbursed the fund unknown to the other party. Hmm. So in such cases, if you go into Liberia as an entrepreneur, you have to be, look, this is a baseline. We all did that in school. Before you go to invest into that country, the fundamental thing is what? You got to look at the legal and the security environment. Until the Liberian government can support this kind, you know, the, you know this, to have an independent judiciary, ensure that we have a, a security system that people can feel confident that when things happen security can become you know they can truly investigate and people see the what impartiality mm -hmm. see the what a true you know a, a, and be able to come out with a report that people can have confidence in mm -hmm. for you know investors you know it will continue to have mom and pop businesses in liberia like i'm going to get to the high level stuff we'll go, try to go into the entrepreneurship you know what all mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to do but people are still a lot of liberia and other you know foreign national want to really do good in this country and for me i give a speech about two three weeks ago i challenged the folks i spoke to to what to look at big pictures of life because liberia as we speak right now without looking at legendary and legacy driven you know infrastructure development Liberia can never be transformed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're looking at both the legal environment, there should be a, a, a very good legal environment that is a judiciary, even though we have an independent judiciary system or branch of government, but um, the inner workings are now working no to no. secure the confidence yeah. of investors. Yeah. Okay, uh, Reverend Dede, you had a question for Dr. Pade. Yes, yes, uh, 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 Reverend Dr. Pade, the President George Weah's pro poor government uh, program aims uh, uh, to address the lack of infrastructure and promote access to basic public services and fight corruption as well as uh, Brother Kendrick talked about. But it has delayed due to the lack of, of funding. Uh, uh, so so my, 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 my question to you is, uh, maybe you follow this pro -po, uh, program. How, how can, can the government uh, create the every involvement environment that, that, that business, the, the business atmosphere will be conducive for entrepreneurs to invest in the economy? Thank you very much, um, Dr. Swa. Uh, I listened to Kendrick quite well. Uh, I think uh, many of us have lived here for quite some time now. We all know what it entails within a democratic framework to be able to create that enabling environment. No country succeeds so easily without, first of all, an actual competent judiciary system. Investors cannot uh, go into an environment that is uh, not as uh, civil, open, transparent, and uh, where they think they can be able to get redress uh, whenever they have uh, an issue or they have a litigation. I think that is a challenging proposition for Liberia. Mm -hmm. The question of a pro pro agenda what is pro pro intended for, Brother Swa, Brother Brother Ray, Brother Kendrick? 
pro-pro from a very rudimentary standpoint is about the people, mm -hmm. is for the people, and it seeks to promote the well-being of the majority of the populace in the actual, in a short sense of the word. So if, if we want to go to an actual pro-pro agenda that the government from the very onset has indicated that this was the purpose and uh, that was the slogan of our brothers and sisters within the current ruling regime to ensure to bring Liberia from a state of apathy, to create an enabling environment to be able to tap into this tapestry. It's a huge tapestry of Liberian diaspora community. Mm -hmm. All right. If I was in the seat of uh, leadership, you can be able to create the enabling environment that encourages you, Dr. Swa, Dr. Red, Brother Kendrick, and a whole sets of people who are within the diaspora community of Liberia. That alone itself is quite enriching to be able to create the enabling environment that will lead to what? Economic stability, economic strength, to encourage this high level of uh, people who are trained in different fields, different areas, different professionals, who probably even if they cannot live in Liberia, mm -hmm. but can be able to create that environment that will be able to cater to the needs and the aspirations of the people. You and I live here. We don't work for government. But it is the constitutional responsibility of the government, a democratic government that seeks the interests of its people, a government that we have to protect the fundamental rights of its citizens. That is enshrined within our own constitution as a constitutional republic. So I, I think there is something that is missing here in terms of uh, apples and oranges and the table issues which are quite crucial in terms of what is it the support that the government gets from the people that feedback i mean look at what is happening in our land the challenges the difficulties i'll give you an instance i i, I had gone back to liberia over after 21 years all right i have a parcel of uh, farmland in the banga area and I was there for about a week and the people, they were looking and wondering, but this guy is from the States. I had on my boots and I had the people in the boots we were planting, planting plantains, over 2000 of them. And they were wondering why were I doing it? But I mean, it's just out of the leap of faith as a person who loves his country. But what is gonna encourage me to do an expansion to say, well, maybe I wanna plan 5,000 plantains in Banga itself. Now, I mean, let's look by Swa when we grew up. I mean, in, in the in the mid 70s, Liberia was a median income country in the West African region. All right, agriculture, whether it was the BCADP, NCADP, LCADP, these were structures that were set in place by the top of government to create and to reduce the considerable increase of mass migration. Look at Monrovia. I mean, Brother Kendra, you were there in 2018. I was there just February of this year. I mean, the whole place is upside down. The traffic, so what? You can't drive over there. <laughs> just for an instance. I mean, the, the cars and the motorcycles are coming from everywhere. Nothing is structured. So I think we ourselves need to take the initiative to begin to take this, not only the leap of faith as people who are in the church community. And I'm asking the question today on gracious hope. What has become of the moral conscience of the state? The Liberian <clears throat> Council of Churches. All of the challenges and the difficulties that we are encountering in the land, the considerable resources that is abroad 
to be able to create this enabling environment. What is going to encourage you, Dr. Ray, to go back to Liberia? What is going to encourage Brother Swat to go back to Liberia? What is it going to encourage me or Kendrick, who is a businessman who has over 50 people employed in the Boston area? You know, he has the skills, he has the training, he has the education. To be able to create high environment, like he said, if the enabling environment is not created, what is going to encourage foreign investors to go to the land? The Canadian story you just explained, Brother Kendrick. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are all perennial issues and challenges that we are faced with. But in answering your question, Brother Swa, pro pro is for the people, by the people, and for the people. Now, see the opulence, the way our brothers are living, those who are in leadership. I don't see, I don't, uh, it's, it's not a criticism, but I mean, I'm just speaking to the fight. Those who are called to the gospel, those who are called to prophecy, those who are called to teach and to preach the good news. The good news is about liberation. And this is why Jesus indicated quite clearly in the book of Luke, I have come to set the captives free. Hmm. The law has anointed me to come to proclaim the good news. The good news is about the people who are in the trenches. The people in the trenches cannot continue to be in the trenches if they don't have the possibilities of survival. How can you live in a country that belongs to you and you become the third citizen? I'm not even talking about the second citizen. Look at the well-being of our people, the business sector. Foreigners have taken it over. Do is the government that is the government of the people a government that is pro pro is this seeking the interest and the agenda of the citizens itself so how, how, how can this issue be reversed that's the question how can this yeah, issue so be the way to re, to reverse it is to face the realities of our time and be genuine to each other love if the pro pro agenda is about catering to the needs of the people i think our brothers and sisters who are in power need to go back to the drawing board to realize that power, power itself is inherent in the people. Look at our history, so where we've come from, from Doe to Taylor to, 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 to Ellen Johnson, Salim to Julie Bryan, is what I bought Eastern Core Insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. The pathological dichotomy of Liberia is that we need to speak truth to power. And all of us who are the stakeholders, the brothers and sisters, what are those of us in the diaspora, we need to come together to begin to really sound the warning. Liberia can be like Sierra Leone. See what happened just recently. Don't be surprised if we gravitate to that level because of what? If the people are continuing to be disenchanted, what leads to protests? Dr. King calls protests as what? When people cannot be listened to, it's the retrospection of the voiceless. What do they do? And that is not what we seek. That is not what we are propagating on this platform. But let's face the reality, brothers and sisters. We have to call a spade a spade. If the proper agenda is for the well-being of the people, then I think our brothers and sisters, all the way from Mr. Weir, who is in governing, and at the same time, who is a bishop, the paradoxes of life. Here is the brother who is a leader of the nation. He speaks in the church, and he is a bishop. How can the, the oppressed suppress the voiceless? Who, who is the bishop? Okay, okay. He, he's oh, yeah. just um, giving uh, a moniker, we call it a moniker. <laughs> but, but here is the, he, he, okay. So, but but this is this is what we're looking at. We 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 see people, or we and we hear a lot of people in the diaspora, even in the country. You know, speak their mind, they speak through the power. It has been going on from government to government, where people exercise their rights to speak, they criticize. But again, we want to. Uh, I hear to what uh, Dr. Clarence Moniba is saying that we oh, don't right necessarily that. need government as a whole, even though we need yeah. a, the, the environment to be secure. 
Security is very important, and that is a fundamental constitutional right for the government or the governing authority to make sure that the environment is enabling for every citizen to strive in every way to be innovative and creative. Um, and also, we need a judiciary system where cases can be can receive redress in, a, in an impartial way. We get that. But what we need to do to understand here is, is that Dr. Moniba, Clarence Moniba is saying, we can even, we, can, we, can, we, can, we don't have to necessarily go to government for anything, but we ourselves, the people, in various communities can get together and grow their own garden, their own pepper in the backyard. Why should we uh, uh, import pepper? Why should we import potatoes? Oh, yeah. no, I, I agree so, with so that. So that's what I we're getting that. at. I mean, it's not only about food alone, but there are other yeah. sectors of the economy as a whole. And we look at all the governments that, that have been there. I mean, we know security is a problem. We know our three branches of government, they have so many inefficiency and ineffectiveness. We know that uh, we have weak institutions and we are all hoping and praying that it will become stronger. But these institutions are occupied by men and women, families like, like us or people oh, yeah. like us. And so they have weakness as, as a whole. So if our country is not, uh, growing in where the, the business environment, Liberians uh, uh, increase in number of business ownership and taking a charge of the economy, then there is something that is wrong somewhere. Either we are not united and we focus too much on maybe the criticism instead of the uh, instead of what we can do uh, to bring those ideas, or maybe there there are lack of resources, or maybe the government is not doing uh, their part by securing the environment. There are a lot of other things that are multi-factors, uh, things so, that we can so brother Ray, let me Let me give However, you an example. Let me give you an example. Okay. Uh, I, I'm all the way from Lofa. Mm -hmm. The Kima War. I would tell you that a bulk of the people in the very village that I, I grew up in are practically residents of Monrovia. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm certainly sure residents who come from Balsa, from Sando, and other places, the considerable mass migration has created this problem because people were offended, people were abused, people, some of the places like in Lofa and other areas in terms of the Ulimo massacre and all the things that went on. A bulk of our people fled. You go to Monrovia, a bulk of the people who are villagers are practically residents of Monrovia. When you are having the conversation about trying to go to Lofa, I was there and I said, well, the next trip I'm going to go to Lofa, they thought something was wrong with me. And that's just the Lofa experience. And I've spoken to people who come from Bonk County, a bulk of the people who were in Bonk, they left. All right. People who come from Nimba, Nimba is to some level stabilized in the way that uh, marketing and other things are going on. So a lot of the people, mm -hmm. they are concentrated within the Ganta, Gompa area, Sani Kule, you know, Luga Tour and uh, Ban and all those other areas. Nimba to some yeah, level in places. terms of the movement of people, they are quite uh, stabilized in terms of what it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, Magibi County, a bulk of the whole of Kakata, if you talk to people in Kakata, almost, I don't know what it is, uh, a, a bulk of the people who come from Vonjama and the Lofa regions, they are in Kakata. All right. So so I think if, if, if we need a government that is going to encourage uh, rural migration, how do you do this? to encourage rural migration, whether it's going to be an incentive program that the government should be able to work with the World Bank, with the African Development Bank, to create an avenue for what? For decentralization. I talk about in the 70s, well, you remember, even in the 80s, you have all these agricultural projects. These agricultural projects were intended for what? To discourage mass migration. The NCADPs, the BCADPs, the oil companies, you know, in Maryland and other places, these were functionaries that were what? Encouraging the middle class who were either from uh, high school or from the colleges or from Cottington, the BCADP. These were sources of employment.
-hmm. Let's take, for example, the, the people you call the Zogos. Well, okay, these are the people that elected the government, a, a buck of the young people. Why not create an agriculture framework that will be able to put these people to work? Like the dream mm -hmm. of, of Dr. Moniba, for mm -hmm. instance. What's wrong with the government putting in five, six, or $10 million and say, look, we are going to make sure that there is self-sufficiency in, in food production. We're going to produce rice. We're going to produce cassava. We're going to produce pepper. I mean, believe me, man, you talk about pepper. People should, like Dr. Moniba is uh, indicated in that particular video. So, so that is easy. Let me just let me just come in uh, uh, briefly for, for Kendry to come in. We we let's stay on the World Bank. According to the World Bank, according to the World Bank, yeah. or Kendry, this question goes to you. According to the World Bank, due to the pandemic, the population living below the poverty national poverty line has increased from fifty five point five percent in twenty nineteen to sixty eight point nine percent, meaning that an additional five hundred twenty six thousand people are at a risk of living below or going to poverty. Now, you've been a businessman. How can we work to lift our people out of poverty, Kendrick? Once again, I'll come to my premise that I made like before. For Liberia to move forward, that is why we need the love of a country. Look, you can put millions of dollars into Liberia. One, that money is not properly what? Strategically positioned to cater to what? They need a population. You cannot have the desired impact. When I was in graduate school, I came across this um, report for the United Nations, UNDP, and World Bank. They said for every country they went to, to help to, uh, for economic growth in, the, in any country that they went to. They only succeeded when there was an idea, when there was a need, the burning desire, when it was for the world, the presidency. So with all the what you and uh, Warbeck is saying, we can look at our recent history. When Gerald Rollins took over Ghana, where was Ghana? You and I were still in Africa. You saw Ghana was in a ditch. Look at Rwanda. We all you know had the same civil war at the same time. Look at what has happened. So for me, I really don't want to look at Liberia transformation in a you know in a mediocre way. I'm looking at what a grand transformational agenda. Like he was saying, we need to definitely incentivize. I went to Liberia, every project say Chinese, Chinese, Chinese. We have other Liberia roaming all the streets. Is it not from Ellen Johnson Town to George Weir? They have a really, from, from uh, Ellen Town, it was a real missed opportunity. All of these people would have been what? Given the opportunity to get vocational skill. We have uh, anything that will bring market-based development that we are talking about entrepreneurship today. It's what uh, based on what infrastructure development with all the agriculture thing Harry Moneyball is talking about. If you don't have what a real national highway connecting all of our sub regions, all the counties, nothing can be what we, we cannot really realize sustain agriculture development in our country. People need to bring their product to market. Mm -hmm. You need manufacturing companies. So all of this thing, you need a real legendary legacy driven agenda. And we must have a leader at the president who is selfless. Like you're talking about the opponents. This morning before I could come here, I started thinking about what to really say. I don't want to be so political on the podcast. But election is 2023. It's a challenge. They can, we can try that. The Minister of State was just denied after he had clearly stated that, you know, in a way that he supported corruption, he tried to deny that. If all they say they are not corrupt, which undermine, you know, development, entrepreneurial development in that country, we can start with what? I can ask Henry Costa to raise money 
or Ellis can raise money on the podcast. We can have independent auditors. Let it let, let us audit these guys if our auditing they are clear. Because we cannot have anything to go on in this country until the issue of corruption is settled. And it, it lies within what the content of legal of the or the judiciary. Because you have uh, the auditing bureau, all of the you know uh bureau that they are created, just a big bureaucracy. There is nothing genuine about this. We can have independence auditing entity to audit their assets and see whether they are telling all the truth. So carry money to that country from the United Nations, from the World Bank, when these people are not having the law of their own country. I went there 2018, George Brown was barely four months in office. I saw a whole lot of construction going on. I said, but he just took over less than four months. We talked about the issue of depravity, our people worldwide. They came out with a big agenda pro quo. Then you took over four months. There's nothing for the ordinary people. You're looking after yourself. What are you telling me? It's completely contrary to the general pro quo. So to transform that country, to make sure that a lot of people are not, in, not, not denied economic opportunity in terms of gainful employment, that impact their, you know, their family, individual family, economically and socially, we need people who are, who are honest, who love that country. It cannot be for themselves. So can, can, you, can you start a business in Marifa now in the face of this situation? Can you uh, put uh, your money in the economy right now before Ellis comes? I know Ellis has a question. I mean, just that's, open that, it. That's, honestly, I, I, frankly. I, to be frank, to be frank, I, I acquired a lot of passes of light in Liberia to give it a shot. Like I said, for me, somebody have to make the ultimate sacrifice. We Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. We saw President Lee Rowland went to jail when he took out all his fingernails. At the end of the day, he was able to transform Ghana. Ghana today is a, is a history that we all can relate to. Somebody have got to make the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, Councilor Gorbro in the state not too long ago, you know, Massachusetts hosted him at the time. A lot of people ask some critical questions. But I see a lot of the political, you know, people who are expressing their desire to run for presidency. I really want for them to be, you know, telling me what kind of legendary or legacy driven thing that they have. Because we cannot just, you know, be preaching about corruption, this, that. But I really want for them to convince me that when they get to that presidency, it's not going to be up, but then it's going to be up in Liberia. Okay, I'm, I'm sure Ellis has a question to come in. Yeah, okay. So now we, we, we talk a lot about how we should have good governance. Good governance can lead to the, the uh, economic growth and opportunity for, for all. Yeah. Now, corruption will always exist because Absolutely. we are humans and we, all, we have that sin nature and our propensity to do wrong will always be there. However, with our faith, we tend to uh, implement what Christ says we should do. I right? love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul and your strength and love other people. And loving other people should be genuine, should be authentic and reaching out to them. That is become a servant as a leader. Now we see the servanthood in some leaders and we don't see it in some leaders mm -hmm. now. But what we, what we have gone through we have gone through a lot of chaotic moments in our country, and our history is replete with bloodletting, hatred, jealousy, envy, and the rest. And there are grieving hearts in our country now following the, the, uh, the war, uh, people who, who were affected in many ways, killed, gone down, murdered. And the environment, of course, we know it is insecure in a way where people get missing, um, Human, human ritual sacrifice, uh, and, and and we and we we all see those things going on, and they have been there all along, not just in this government but mm -hmm. prior governments. Mm -hmm. However, if you compare and contrast Liberia with some other countries, there are other countries who thrive through and they develop. Okay, with all the chaos, so then it goes back to the individual responsibility to each of us. Uh, I believe that it will truly love our country and we want for our country to grow. Uh, we can also do things that the government cannot do because the government 
does not have the hand to get all the eyes to be everywhere. And so if I listen to Dr. Clarence Moneybuyer, what he is saying is that, for example, we can grow our own food. We can do some other things that will lead to national development. And, and, and so this is this is my point. And this is where I want for us to see how what are some of the things that we can do on our own with our involvement of government to make our country grow. There's one thing that Alex, um, I thought of, you know, before coming here. From the onset, I think Stuart alluded to the issue of funding, right? So an individual can go and make a sacrifice. Like that the money might have a brilliant idea, but does he have the resources of their own to implement most of those things that he's thinking about now? So it requires collective effort. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage where well, many Liberians that love that country, we all can think about what brainstorming that country, it belongs to all of us, no matter who is at the presidency. I don't think any government can, you know, have the courage to, you know, eliminate all of us, but all we try to go and help our people in an honest way. It makes sense. However, we have to make comparing argument as well to donor community. Because when I see what's going on in Liberia, it, it's just unbelievable when you look at when Ebola came into that country. Our healthcare delivery system was completely decimated. And there were a lot of goodwill from the you know, international community. If you see some of the, the statistics, very astounding how much the United States government during um, Obama administration you know, gave to that country. So we look at all of this uh, do, uh, donut relationship in, in uh, supporting financial, uh, like government financially. I think it's about time that some of all who have, you know, the agenda to either make an impact either from the, you know, advocacy community or from the entrepreneur, you know, we need to make comparing argument and group ourselves to, you know, prevail on donor institution. They got a leverage. They can tell the Liberian government, we have a one billion dollar for agriculture program for Liberia, but we identify, you know, organizations that will be held accountable to us, and you can send your monitor as well, but we cannot directly put the money at the disposal of the Liberian government. Mm -hmm. That can be another way to change the trajectory, because it, every year they're giving so much money for infrastructure development, a role like. Uh, Healthcare, the school. How many new schools have been built in recent time? How many new hospitals? The referral hospital in Monrovia is lying down in ruin. Yesterday, <laughs> if you look at you state, you know, website, see how much America has been giving annually to the Liberian government to support the healthcare, you know, delivery system. When I went to Monrovia, I wanted to, I really wanted to speak to the what, the healthcare attaché at the U.S. Embassy. Why are you guys continuing giving money to the Liberian government? We, we, we. You got organizations that some of all here we are US based you know companies. Is it necessary that you try some of our organizations and see, oh, because here we are what will be accountable to the US government? Is it possible mm -hmm. that they use some other, you know, you know, diaspora based like brand organization to but to deliver some of these um, services to our people? Because the truth of it is that I don't care how much cool how you have. If you don't have the resources, if you don't have the ability to raise a needed fund, you cannot make any impact. I get it. Mm -hmm. Let me say what favor of our action is what? Meaningless. So if, if you can go and preach everything you want to preach. You will need money to what? To, to pay the people that will be, or uh, to incentivize, that, let's say it might not be you know, salary from the beginning, but if you're taking somebody with four or five children who is married, you're telling them to spend maybe 12 hours a day or maybe working 40 hours a week on an agriculture project, how the children going to, how the family going to survive? You need to incentivize that project. Mm -hmm. But if, if all the money is not there, you cannot really accomplish your goal. So um, the, the easier way to raise the money is what? Is to make a comparing case to the international community because they have the money. They are continuing to give money to like the Liberian government. And I can, we all can see we are not seeing the impact. We are not seeing the impact. It's about time now we advocate that, okay, we want you to continue to help our people. 
but can we look at the way you send the money to Liberia? Okay, uh, and our, our Reverend Dr. Oh, Pate, I know we talk about security, good security, good se secure environment. We talk about good legal system, uh, getting rid of corruption. Uh, those are things that if they are implemented everywhere, in every way, then we'll have growth. Uh, what are some of the recommendations for, for, for you, for what you see so far to make Liberia grow into a vibrant economy for all? Well, thank you. History is uh, it's not the past, if, uh, if I quote uh, James Baldwin. It is the present. Uh, Liberia is a great country. And uh, like I indicated from the very beginning, if we were a medium income country in the uh, mid 70s, we can be again. We can even be more powerful. Uh, one of the things I would suggest is uh, the issue of accountability mm. in Liberia. Corruption is at the highest level. That's not from me. It's from our development partners. So if we can be as genuine as we ought to be, it's love of country. Nationalism is what we need at this time in Liberia. I will urge those in leadership, those in advocacy, to begin to create the framework that is necessary to create the avenue that will ensure peace, stability, human development. Our people have gone so much. They've gone through so much. Liberia can make a difference. That is one of the things on the question of accountability. So our international partners must be able to create, like uh, Kendrick indicated, this framework. If if it's gonna be, well, we are all taxpayers here. So uh, brother, so uh, brother, we are, yeah. isn't it? Our yeah. money is yeah. going to Liberia's development. I mean, that's just the truth. All right, we, we sent considerable amount of remittances besides even our taxpayers' money that is still going to Liberia. I mean, I don't know how many people have called you. I mean, the, the, the suffering is to the extreme now. I hmm. mean, every week, sometimes I get over 50 calls. It's not being like this. Sometimes as the phone, the phone keeps ringing. I'm like, okay, I don't know which one to answer because once you speak to somebody, the only thing the person is telling you that they want to get half decorized. They're not eating two days or three days. How do we change this pathetic situation? And it's for the law of the country, like I cited, an, I mean, a situation. I went home, planted over 2,000 planting trees. I'm going to go back in December. I'm going to Lofa. I'm a son of a farmer. I know the history of the agricultural developments, whether it's LCADP, the BCADP. My father never had an opportunity to go to school. Hmm. But all of the managers, LPMC managing directors, down to President Doe, they all went on the farm. All right, because these were exhibits. The World Bank provided the money, the cocoa and the coffee came, the production came, the incentives were there, like Brother Kendrick indicated. What is going to encourage this level of what? Look at Lofa. Look at the fools that are there. They are all wasting. Hmm. A lot of the people, even the little people who are working, farm to market role. It's a major issue because the farmers are producing, but nobody can buy the food because there's no road. Hmm. And road is capital incentive. It's capital intensive. And if roads will be built, then the road funds should not be tempered with. The road funds should not be infringed upon. It has nothing to do with wherever you come from. I mean, let's look at Liberia's history. In the 60s and the 70s, transshipment, where we were growing up, I know the basic transshipment for Sierra Leone, for Mali, from the Republic of Guinea, all came through the Freeport of Monrovia. Hmm. Because nobody wanted to send transshipment all the way from Europe to go all the way to Conakry and bring it back to my center. You know? And, and those those jobs create a considerable level of what economic power for plenty of liberians 
people who were foreigners, let's create the enabling environment that Liberia can strive. Mm -hmm. Liberia can make progress. It's, it's not really about one individual. And I think the struggle we have had in the past has been about, okay, what legacy do we want to leave behind? Good leaders leave behind legacies, creating framework and structures that would benefit the people. I mean, Kendrick, you cited, you know, uh, uh, Rollins. You know, with all the challenges, Ghanaians used to step online for bread. Ghanaians, I knew when I was growing up. I mean, the the, the country was in desperate straits. Mm -hmm. They came to Liberia. There were teachers. There were students. There were business people. All right? These people were whack whole day in the waterside area. I'm not talking about Sunni where the fishing community and all the things you can think about. So, I mean, we were the beacon of hope. Mm -hmm. It can be a game. So, let the government create an avenue so that Dr. Ray, Dr. Soa, you know, Brother Kendrick, with all of the expertise to feed, encourage, to say, wait a minute. I have two, three million dollars, or I have investors that I can be able to collaborate with to go to Liberia and create an enabling environment. But trust me, man, you talk to any investor, the first thing they're going to tell you, they want to look at the country profile. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Once you, the first thing they ask you, where are you from? You say, Liberia. I say, okay, uh, let's, let's have a meeting. Before you get to that bold meeting, the man has already read the country profile and everything. By the time you get there, he just, uh, you know what, uh, Doc, we understand, but uh, right now, <laughs> you know, uh, we can we can invest right now. We the yes, situation. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Th thanks, Dr. Pada, for that, for that, uh, uh, for the eloquence in, in, in describing that, uh, the situation we have. Uh, I know time is uh, almost five yes. minutes. Yeah, time is five minutes. Five minutes. more minutes. Yeah, so we want, to, we want to see how we can bring this to a conclusion. So let's go ahead. Yeah, so overall, overall, we've been talking about economy, we'll talk about impa, in, uh, impartial, uh, impartial, impartial and impartial judiciary branch, um, uh, transparency, accountability on the part of the executive, that is the, uh, the, um, the, the cabinet ministers, the, all of the agencies, including the presidency, and then also looking at um, ways and means in which we can bring about justice. For example, if you invest your, your money or your time uh, in a business or invest in a, in a Liberian who is on the ground and, and that person uh, mismanage your funds or your investment and you get to court, you want to get redress. If we have a system that can work efficiently, that will encourage people. We are talking about all of these things, accountability, transparency, good legal system, as well as security environment. These are all things, and good road network, good road network. These are all things I believe that if we implement, uh, it will lead to growth and progress in every way or development and progress in every way. However, we may fall short if we don't have the willpower individually, because if we say and profess that we are people of faith, okay, and for example, if I'm a minister of agriculture and I'm a Christian and I know my faith has values and the principles that I live by with the help of God, I will want to use that willpower or that wisdom to look out as a servant for other people. But if we, from what I, from what I'm hearing so far, all the descriptions that you've given, looking at a country when it comes to growth and how growth has been hindered, it goes back to leadership. It goes back to the individual willpower, and it goes back to the question of whether that person truly believes in his or her faith. And this is where we see the stagnation of our growth. So then, it is up in the air. Both of you, uh, before we conclude here. Any final word? Well, I will just, um, my final word on the podcast to the Liberian people and to the world at large that are listening to us uh, this evening is that truly Liberia still have the possibility to overcome the, uh, the environmental depravity right now. Our people can. They, stay, they are still 
hope for our people. And I want to encourage all of our Liberian and friends of Liberia to engage each other, you know, in a real civil manner and look at what the issue of empathy. People are struggling, you know. We are all human beings. So sometimes when I look at how people try to look at material accusation, I'm not being like Brian recent time, but I hear a lot of these guys have mansions. How many rooms can one person sleep in? Yeah. And you see the children two, three years old out there in uh, 2018. You see a three year old standing in the street in the rain with no feature. So it's about time that people look at the issue of empathy and the law of a country. And my real advocacy coming going forward is to maybe speak to like minded librarians that we cannot no longer sit on a fan. We need to consolidate effort and find any means possible by faith. By faith. Is there anything difficult for God? I don't think so. Oh. So we need to consolidate effort. And see, because government in Liberia, they look up to outside, you know, financial support, economic support. If where they, we know the root of their survival, if we can be, you know, a partner or a party on the negotiating table, I think we can tremendously change the trajectory of how, you know, donor funds are used in Liberia. And that can make a tremendous impact in mm. transforming and bringing economic development for the people. That I can't remember it with my resources, I cannot build any kind of road network, which is very, very vital to change the course of the people's life. I cannot build, you know, a game for you know school system that will go all across the country. Or government by nature is a what the largest consumer and purchase of goods and services. So whether we like it or not, we have to have a government in Liberia that is selfless, that look at the people as a priority, not their individual acquisition of uh, properties. Folks in Liberia and government, for me, if they're listening to me, you guys are reading from the wrong history. We saw Tottenham, he built all of those fabulous, you know, personal homes. They are all forests right now. The same thing from door to tiller, white flower. I don't know if they what became of it right now. And, you know, we see President Weah, they say he acquired a whole lot of individual property. When he leaves power tomorrow, all those things will have no impact in the, ordinary, in the life of ordinary Liberia. Let, him, let us look at better history. Look at Cote d'Ivoire next door. If we've been gone for almost, almost 50 years, but you see the infrastructure, economic development in that nation. You say Ghana, look at Rwanda right now. These were transformational and legendary and legacy driven project, infrastructure project that these people were, you know, they had a deal for their country, they will still be there for the next 200 years. Hmm. So we need to think outside of the box. You know, we need to be party to the you know international partner table. Thank you, okay, brother. Thank you. I mean, I mean, it's, it's clear enough. We, we get we get a whole legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for you guys providing yeah. me the platform tonight. I know, I know. It was a pleasure yeah. being here. I know you have mm -hmm. a lot to share, but we we get to uh, maybe we might have another time to come back. So let's hear from Dr. Paddy. <laughs> uh, th thank you very much. Uh, what well, I want to close on this, and I want to go to scripture. Uh, John 4, first John 4 16 reminds us that. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Liberia is at a pivotal stage. We need to love again. We need to love one another. The hate is too much. The hate over the considerable resources that are God given 
if we can collaborate, if we can love, if we can share, if we can be our brother's keeper, if we can look at our history, where we came from to where we are, then we can determine what the future is. Our history is in the present. And uh, we can make progress counting on what we have gone through in the past to be able to build a better nation. My appeal to all of us tonight is to be transparent, to be nationalistic, to speak truth to one another in comfort, being realistic. You know, one of the things my advisors, uh, two of my advisors told me on campus was the best person to speak truth to is your family. Mm. Tell your brother and sister the truth. Because the reality is the truth crushed to the world will rise again. Tomorrow, there's going to be a day of reckoning. And for those of us who are men of the cloth, those of us who follow the path of service, Seven leadership requires humility. It requires listening. It requires the person who is in charge to be an exemplar, to set the stage, to set the example, and the rest of the people will follow. The Bible says people without a vision, what happens? The perish. perish. We need that in Liberia. And, and trust me, we have so much talent. If there's love, there's nothing we cannot do. It's good to be here, my brothers and sisters. I appreciate all of you, <laughs> Brother Swa, <laughs> Brother Ray. We've been having this conversation. And uh, today, when Brother Ray raised the question, I said, yeah, I am, Dr. Ray. Send me. It's good <laughs> being here. Yeah, That's so really yeah, we'd <laughs> we'll like to thank both of you for coming, uh, yeah. Mr. Kendrick uh, Menti, yeah. and of the uh, he's the president and CEO of Wonder Star in Massachusetts, and Reverend Dr. Zeze Pare, he's a pastor at the Seneca United Methodist Church in Seneca, Pennsylvania, and we are so glad to have both of you here as our special guest. We had uh mr isaac vi tukwa who should have been here as a guest but he had a family emergency and he could not make it and so hopefully we pray that uh, everything will go well with him yeah we wish uh, him well. hopefully he'll be back here another day or another time okay uh, brother, Rev, then, please, please say yes. a prayer for reverend tapper we understand his eyes got burned yes he reverend tapper the new up uh chairman yeah. Um, his home was They're burned down, including his uh, vehicle. Uh, Brother Swan, can you offer a prayer for uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Luther Martin? What is his name? Uh, Tape, Luther Tape. Yes. I thought I was praying for Luther Martin. <laughs> no, Luther Tape, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I, I don't know the, the entire story, but uh, we can always go to guy in prayer. Well, some unknown people uh, burned his house, his mm. home, two houses, I believe, and his vehicle. And one of his, uh, uh, what I say, one of the residents of the home, of his home, uh, was, was in the house and he got badly wounded. Wow. And he was taken to the hospital. But... Uh, Reverend uh, Tapper and his wife, I understand they were in there huh. when that uh, wow. incident took place. That's but it's bad. all wickedness uh, because it's unexpected. We don't know the details, but I believe that settling score with someone, even if you have something against them, it's some sort of an anniversary or grudge, yeah. I think it's something that uh, should be taken legally. But taking um, revenge in your own power i believe it is tantamount to chaos and insecurity that we're talking about an insecure environment yeah. that no one wants to invest in yeah. so we are we are hoping and praying that the family will uh receive god's comfort his emotional comfort because it is tough uh to see your entire home burn down that your work for the bill just burn down within a few minutes yeah and so we'll offer yeah. this prayer 
to yes, um, yes, yes, private yes, doctor, yes. Uh, Tape and his wife and his uh, children and relatives and friends as well. Okay, so let, let's, 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 pray. let's pray. Let us pray. Father, we first we say thank you for everything, oh God, for you said in your word, we should give thanks in everything, for that is your will concerning us in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we don't understand why uh, all the things that happen to us are uh, in according with your will. But again, you are God. You hold the future. You have every answer in your hands. So we lift Reverend and his family into your hands in the name of Jesus. We pray for strength, for comfort, for courage of God in such a sad time in their family. We lift them up in a very special way, Lord, for you know you can comfort them, you can lift them up, you can lead them in a way your path will lead, oh God. So, Father, you know the whole story. You know the future, Father God. Well, you know because you are God, and you are God all by yourself. So thank you, God. Strengthen them. Bless them. Provide for them, Father God, as your servant Job experienced Dangerous situation himself, Father God, but you you replenished what he had threefold. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will visit with this family and replenish what they've lost. We pray in Jesus' mighty name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen. I would like to thank all of you viewers today. And don't forget, you can watch a replay here on our, page, our Facebook page and YouTube page. You can subscribe for free. You can also have easy and quick access to all of our biblical resources by downloading the app. I'm going to put it right here on the screen. You can download the app. Here is it. Get to your phone, get to the uh, Play Store or any phone you have, Andrea or Apple. Just go and look for Gracious Hope Bible Fellowship and you can download that. You'll see the podcast, devotional, both rating and, and, and voice and video, as well as um, uh, Bible teaching series. And um, you can even take a free Bible course, including sermon notes and other things, all available in the app. It's a one-stop place where you can access our website and interact with us. For example, if you need prayer or anything that you would like to um, uh, uh, use as part of your growth, your spiritual growth. Also, if the Lord moves your heart, you can also give online free, uh, give online. And of course, that of course will help us to enhance the gospel message of Christ. This is the podcast. Every Saturday we are here. Every Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Uh, Central Time, and 1 p.m. Pacific Time in Liberia. It is 8 p.m. GMT. My name is Alexander Red, and Reverend Swadede is the co-host here, along with our guest for today. Until then, we shall see you again. And you have a pleasant day, but don't forget to share our link. Mm -hmm.